Okay, so this question says, um, an object is located in air, oh, and there's glass coming up later, 32 centimeters from the vert, okay, I think I'm gonna start, have to start drawing it because it's, the question description is describing something and oh, I need to draw it. Okay, so it's talking about a concave surface. Okay, so let me just draw a concave surface. And uh, I'm gonna uh, note this side as my glass side. And this side as my air side. So uh, let me draw on an axis that goes through a vertex for the purpose of locating stuff. So I have an object that I'm going to represent with an arrow that's located some distance, I'm going to call this a DO because this feels like an object and it feels like it's giving me an object distance. An object is in DO from a vertex of a concave surface made of glass with a radius of curvature. Oh, okay, I'm given some radius of curvature. Let me say that this is the center and that's the radius of curvature. Um, 10 centimeters, um, use the index of refraction for air one, glass 1.5. Okay, uh, it's asking on which side of the concave surface is the image by refraction located? Um, hmm. So, Reading the description of the question, I think the question completely specifies the, the setup. So I'm saying this to say that it's definitely not, not enough, enough information given because it's telling me the object distance, it's giving me the radius of curvature, it's telling me the index, indices of a refraction, and I think that's a complete set of information enough to find out the image distance or the where the image is. Now I'm stalling because um, I'm not quite sure where it should be. Let me just uh, kind of walk, work through some ray tracing just to make sure I'm not um, freaking out for no reason. <laughs> um, so, um, so I'm gonna draw one ray here uh, that goes through the vertex that's kind of an easy one because the ray that, ray that goes through that point should uh, refract the usual way. So Snell's law says when some, uh, uh, when a light ray, sorry, I'm using wrong color. Uh, when a light ray goes from a lower index of refraction to larger, it should uh, refract uh, towards the surface normal. So that's easy. The other points are a little bit harder. Um, so let me see here. Uh, let me try to draw a, a ray that's uh, parallel to the axis. Then on this point, the surface normal looks like, uh, I mean, that's the tangent surface. So the surface normal will look like that. Okay, I think I'm kind of getting the hang of how it's gonna bend. So here it's gonna bend um, so this ray that came in parallel, it's going to bend up. Mm. So I have a feeling it's a, it's gonna be a, a diverging, um, um, a diverging rays on the right hand side, which means the when I locate the image, the image should be located on the other side because these are diverging. If I'm trying to look, where does it look like these rays come from? I should find it somewhere over here. So with that, I would tentatively say that the image is on the same side as the object. But, uh, you know, I'm going to hold off on answering that until I ans finish answering B and C, because um, <laughs> there's gonna be some formulas that I'm gonna have to look up. So B asks, how far is the image by refraction from the vertex of the concave surface? Give your answer in absolute value. 
And you know, from the words like image, if you are thinking of the expressions like the thin lens equation, one over d o uh, plus one over d i is equal to one over f, it doesn't quite work um, because for one, you don't have thin lens, <laughs> you don't even have a lens. Um, you are going from one medium to another medium. So this is where you have to find the somewhat less used formula. Um, I. This is one of those things that I don't have memorized myself. So I would recommend that you follow the hint, go to the textbook section that talks about images formed by refraction. And, and they do the derivation of uh, exact scenario like this, um, where there's a refraction at a, not a, at a plane surface, but refraction at a curved surface. Yeah, refraction at a spherical interface. And ah, here it is. So now they do only want, but um, they give you some sign convention about the radius of curvature so that you can use this one example to apply to basically any time you have a spherical boundary. So let me just um, skip through. Yeah, they do the derivation here. Um, so that's the formula that I'm gonna need. <laughs> let me just uh, copy that over so that I can just to use it on the question side. And I'm going to confirm a, a sign convention on the R. So the N1 and N2, they stand for the incoming side and outgoing side. I'll remember that. And they should tell me some sign convention. Ah, yeah, sign convention for single refracting surface. R is... Uh, positive if the surface is convex towards object, we have a concave, so we are going to have a negative R. So with that, I will go back and, <laughs> um, and apply the formula. Um, and it has some similarities to the thin lens equation, but there are some notable differences. So I do want you to be careful. And um, in the thin lens equation, you have this convenient thing that all the numerators here are one. Here, it's not, it just isn't because uh, one and the other side are, have different index of refraction. So it's just gonna have their index of refraction. It won't cancel out. Um, so, so let me just uh, make the notations that reminds me of uh, what values I should be putting in. This N1, this should be one, the index of refraction of air. N2 should be N glass or uh, 1.5 if we want to plug in numbers. Same here, N2 is N glass and uh, N1 that's air, so I'm just gonna put one. Okay, um, I have DO, I was given that. And I have R, um, so if I'm, so uh, I guess, let me just to say, well, let me say this is the positive quantity and where I have this R, I'll substitute with a minus R for my uh, concave surface of radius curvature 10 centimeter. Okay, I think that then I have everything I need. The rest is an algebra question. So my goal here is to solve for image distance, di. And once I solve for the image distance, that will also answer some questions about which side is the image on. So um, let me do that. I'm gonna uh, put this by itself. So n glass over di is equal to move this over. So n glass minus one over minus r uh, minus one over do. Oh, I, I think I already know my answer to di because everything on the right hand side is negative. Numerator here is positive. So my this whole quantity is negative. I'm subtracting a positive number. So the right hand side is guaranteed to be negative, which means di is going to be negative, which means this is the correct answer. The, the sign convention for the image and the object is that image is kind of expected to be on the outgoing side. So if uh, image distance is positive, it should be somewhere here. If image distance is negative, that means it's on the uh, quote unquote wrong side or the other side. So it should be on the same side as the object. Um, 
Okay, uh, I think, so let me just finish this derivation. Uh, I'm gonna um, see, because I'm gonna be taking reciprocal, I'm gonna combine the fractions. Um, so let me pull out a minus sign, uh, put them with the common denominator, R times DO. Um, on the, these terms, they multiply with the DO. So DO times NG minus DO and um, the fraction on the right, I have to multiply top and bottom by R. So it's gonna be, um, this minus becomes plus because I factored out a minus one plus R. Okay, that's combined fraction. I think that's enough for me to uh, take the reciprocal, which will give me DI over NG is equal to minus uh, R times DO over uh, DO, yeah, let me write it this way, ng minus one uh, plus r. So multiply both sides by ng, that cancels out from this side and I have times ng here. So the rest is just plugging in the numbers uh, that will give you di and um, all these combinations here are positive, you know, this is 0 0.5. So when you finish plugging the number, you should get a negative answer. And since the question is asking about distance, you should give the positive of that negative answer. The negative sign tells you that it's on the same side as the object. The magnification of the image, it's, uh, uh, when you work out the geometry, it should end up in the, Oh wait, should it end up in the same? Let me look at the textbook section to be sure. The difference in the index of refraction makes me worry a little bit. So I want to double check to be sure. Um, do they drive the magnification? They don't drive it. Um, trying to remember if uh, magnification would be affected by index or refraction changing. Um, it might be, let me search the book. I want to be sure, magnification. Um, uh, mirrors wouldn't tell me anything. I, I think uh, in, I'm sure, um, I think a magnification should be affected by, it, it should be affected by um, the two sides being on the, um, having different index of refraction. Because uh, what I'm thinking of is that the geometry that they use to drive this is uh, this ray diagram. And uh, uh, this ray diagram, and what's important to hear is um, what the figures that are important to hear is this triangle here and this triangle. That's what you use to relate the size of the object and the image. And uh, these two angles being the same, congruent angles making them similar triangles that relies on the um, relies on the index of refraction on one side and the index of refraction on the other side being the same. So when they are different, I'm pretty sure the angle here changes, which will change the magnification. Why doesn't your textbook actually drive this formula? It should, it should drive it somewhere. Magnification of the image. Um, Let me um, <laughs> read through the only section that deals with the image formation by refraction to be sure. And uh, there's a good chance the, quest, the way the question is called, coded, it's a uh, uh, that's mistake in it. <laughs> Let me, uh, I, I, I will finish answering here and then uh, go check out the coding to see if uh, I made a mistake when I was coding it in. Uh, magnification, let's see. Ah, uh, here it is. Um, 
so can I use this apparent def? Uh, don't know if I can use that. Um, let's see here. Yeah, it's not telling me the formula. Um, what it should be is, uh, let me just uh, quickly draw the figure that I'll need to um, do it. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I think here I'm actually saved by one thing. The fact that the, <laughs> okay, I think that's why this question was reasonable. Uh, because the image is on the same side as the object, the fact that um, the other side has a different index of refraction, that's okay because the image is actually on this side. So I can still use the expression. Um, so the formula for magnification is minus di over do. And uh, and the, you know, it says use the sign to indicate whether image is upright or inverted. And because my di is a negative, the entire thing should actually be a positive quantity, and that indicates that image is upright. And um, yeah, the question like this, it uh, um, I they could only ask you this question because in this question you have a virtual image that's on the same side as the object in air. Um, if it was the other case, then uh, th that would be a surprisingly difficult question that we shouldn't be asking in this class. Um, so yeah, I think that resolves that issue. Sorry, that uh, wasted more time than it should have. Um, but uh, you know, if uh, these numbers are somehow different, or you know, you have a convex surface, so you have image on the other side, and if they ask you about magnification, uh, kind of remember to go through the geometric optics more carefully to figure out the true magnification formula. Parse the magnification of the image. Now, the way the question was coded, it was intended that you would use this formula, uh, which is actually from section 2.4 about the thin lenses. And um, at the session, I justified that when it's on the same side as object that, that it would work, it doesn't quite work. <laughs> um, and, um, so let me try to briefly explain how you can obtain the correct result, which is quite difficult to obtain. This is one of those formulas that your textbook states without uh, driving. So, so in this section, magnification, they just tell you that this is magnification. Now they define it here. That's the definition. That's what's always correct. Uh, that's uh, what you will always fall back to whenever you have to. And the significant uh, part is this derivation. And that's the derivation that they skipped. And uh, let me point out the, uh, the, the key elements of the derivation and how those elements need to change when you apply the same approach to the refraction at a single surface. So I, I think this is a good diagram to use. So this is how they derive that magnification formula. Let me use the zoom annotations tool here. The magnification formula that they derive, this is what they use. So um, this uh, height of the object, let me just draw an auxiliary figure here to represent that this uh, length here is the height of the object. And um, the geometry that they use are these two similar triangles. You have this triangle here, one, and you have this triangle here, two. And they are similar because these two angles are congruent and, um, and 
uh, everything else works out. So when you have a magnification expressed in terms of the object height and the image height, um, HO over HI, then that ratio of the lengths can be related to ratio of other lengths in this similar triangles. So this length is one that's useful and this length is another length that is useful. Now, when you see it, you will see that uh, those don't involve object distance at all. It involves the focal length of the lens. Wait, uh, sorry, I wrote the magnification backward. It's HI over uh, HO, HI over HO. So when you write the, the uh, matching ratios in the similar triangle, it becomes, um, so the, the focal length is in the denominator and on the numerator, you get this length here, which is di minus f. And you know, none of the, these have anything to do with the, um, with the object distance. And to go from here to the final formula that you see in the textbook, uh, what they use is the, this expression that relates the relevant lengths together, the thin lens formula, one over the object distance plus one over the image distance is equal to one over the focal length. And, and this is an expression that only holds for thin lenses. It does not hold for a single surface refraction. Th that's why you kind of have to go back and redo the derivation. So, um, so, so when you go back and, and you know, I, I do recommend the kind of going through this as an exercise for yourself. It, um, I think once you have all these elements, then it's kind of a relatively simple to go through the algebra and eventually end with this expression, um, uh, uh, di over do in terms of absolute value. <laughs> and you'll have to figure out the sign later. Um, so I do recommend that as an algebraic exercise. And what I would recommend is try doing something similar with a single surface refraction. So when you have a single surface refraction, um, so that's here, uh, they don't have a quite similar figure, but I can try to draw something similar, let's say here. Um, because it, this is where I have some of the rays that I find useful and relevant. So if you imagine um, that my object is here or something like this, then the, you, you need the two rays to locate your uh, image. You need this ray. That's kind of why I'm drawing it here because for this ray, I already know how it's gonna go. It's gonna go this way. It's going to go through this focal point that's labeled as um, image focal length in the textbook. And there's a second um, array. And this was what was initially giving me a pause earlier. Now, I don't think uh, the fact that this refracts this way itself is not um, necessarily problematic. What is problematic is this. When you have uh, this right, uh, sorry, this triangle, and now my image is over here. This is gonna be my image. And I have this triangle. And uh, what, what I was originally worried about is actually fine because these two are going to be similar triangles again, congruent angles and everything's fine. Now, what is problematic is that I have this uh, image distance, di, and I have this uh, focal length and so, you know, it looks very similar to the prior situation. What has changed is if you are trying to say that, um, if you're trying to say this, one over DO plus one over DI is equal to one over F or even one over F2, uh, that won't hold anymore. Here, um, so somewhere in this section, they uh, drive an equation for you. Um, it's, uh, I think, N1 over DO, where N1 is the incoming side, plus N2 over DI is equal to, well, I don't know if I remember this right. Um, <laughs> if I misremembered it, look it up in the book, get the correct version, N2 minus N1 divided by radius of curvature of the surface. 
so and the textbook derives an expression for F2. But what's important here is that um, the the thin lens equation that you the that they were relying on before to derive the magnification formula, it's no longer true. And not with a single surface refraction. So it's a, this uh, expression that you have to use. And when you are using this, you will find that the magnification expression is, uh, it's a different. Uh, you, the, when you go through the derivation and finish the derivation, <laughs> what I think you'll find is that the magnification is, I think di, divided by N2 over DO divided by N1. And this result, it shouldn't depend on if the image is on the, um, on the outgoing side or you, if you have a virtual image. Either way, um, you know, this expression is applicable both to virtual and real image. So you have a different magnification formula, regardless of what side you are on. So, you know, this is quite a bit of complication. So ooh, I already took way more time than I should. Um, so I just want you to make sure that I'm giving you correct information. But uh, it's, uh, I mean, you know, geometric optics, it's, uh, uh, there's, it's practical and there's a lot of challenging things you can <laughs> work through. Um, the goal of this class is um, to necessarily go through all those challenging situations. Um, so uh, I'll just leave that there for the purpose of your homework, the wrong magnification formula will still work. I coded it so that um, I guess I can show you the code. So before um, this was coded as the correct answer and um, you know, it, it's not, um, oops, I thought I saved that. Um, it's not, so um, the way the, the system is coded now, it'll accept both the incorrect common answer and the correct to correct answer as the uh, as both the correct answers.